I would like to introduce you to my sister, Josie DiStefano Palomino, to whom I dedicate the last 30 years. Linda Unfried is the founder of the Hillsborough County, Florida chapter of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. This is their 30th annual candlelight vigil. She started the chapter after her sister was killed by a drunk driver in 1983, the night of her parents' 55th wedding anniversary. That night, Josie and I said goodnight in the parking lot. Little did I know that hug, that kiss goodnight, was that last time together at 12.30 a.m., just a matter of hours after we said goodnight. Josie was hit head-on by a 17-year-old impaired driver. Just a few months before Josie's death, Unfried and her sister had watched a TV movie about the woman who founded the very first MAD chapter in California after her daughter was killed by a drunk driver. God, I don't want her to have died in vain. Mariette Hartley stars in the powerful true story of Candy Leitner, the crusading parent who decided to stand up and fight by creating MAD. After the movie, we called each other and we said, you know, we both have teenagers. If we ever volunteer our time for an organization, let's volunteer with MAD. Soon, she would be much more than a volunteer. After her sister's crash, Unfried wanted to call MAD to help cope with her loss, but there was no chapter in the Tampa area. I wanted to learn how to help my family and in time to help other families as I was physically watching my family fall apart. Unfried decided she should start a MAD chapter in Hillsborough County. In March of 1984, the Hillsborough County chapter was officially chartered and I held the first position of president. We had become a part of 330 chapters in 47 states. It all started four years earlier with Candy Leitner. Her 13-year-old daughter, Carrie, was walking to a carnival when an impaired driver swerved into the bike lane, hit her from behind, and drove away. She died the same day. Leitner's anger over this horrible loss drove her to create the first MAD chapter. She talked about her journey on CNN in 2012. I was so outraged that this man that killed my daughter had been released from bail two days before for another hit and run drunk driving crash had been arrested numerous times before and was still driving on a valid California driver's license. And then in killing my daughter, probably wouldn't go to jail, much less prison. She says she wanted to prevent such a thing from happening again, punish the man responsible, and change the system that allowed the man who killed her daughter to continue to drink and drive. But changing attitudes about drinking and driving would prove to be an uphill battle. I called it the only socially acceptable form of homicide in this country. Her mission was to educate and change society's attitude. One of the first things she did was to begin a mad PSA campaign to put a face on the victims of drunk driving. My husband went to the scene and came back to tell me that our only son was dead. And it's just as if we stepped into a nightmare that we can't get out of. It's something that stays with you forever. You want to forget and you can't. One of MAD's first major accomplishments came in 1984 when a new national law was passed that raised the minimum drinking age to 21. Leitner even attended the signing ceremony with President Reagan. The alcohol industry didn't buy into raising the drinking age to 21. We did it anyway, saved thousands and thousands of lives. Leitner left MAD in 1985 over differences in how to run the organization, but her mission carried on through people like Linda Unfried. What a simple task, I thought. A simple message about responsibility. People will certainly get that. It's simple. I never expected the uphill battle we were about to engage in. We spoke to anybody in any organization who would listen to us. Our mission was to educate and to change attitudes about drinking and driving in a society where drunk driving was socially acceptable. MAD launched countless public awareness campaigns from the original Taiwan On For Safety Red Ribbon campaign Walk Like Mad to the Walk Like Mad fundraisers. They helped to pass more laws, including a federal law in 2000 that lowered the legal blood alcohol content level from 1.0 to 0.08. They established a victim advocacy program to provide support to those who have been affected by drunk driving and also began a program to talk to DUI offenders. In 1990, we launched our victim impact panel here in Hillsborough County. 
DUI offenders are required as a part of their probation to attend these panels where victims share their stories about how DUI has affected their lives. 23-year-old William Lato is one of those DUI offenders. I've heard it all my life, all through high school, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive. You know, I thought, oh, whatever, that's not going to happen to me, I'll be fine, um, I can handle it, but just one night, one night can just change your life. Leto was at the candlelight vigil as part of his probation for causing a drunk driving accident. He was injured and so were two of his friends. I was lucky. Everyone is fine now. This was almost a year ago. Take it from me. Don't put yourself in this position. It's just not worth it. Over the years, Matt has made progress in helping to decrease drunk driving accidents by educating people about the dangers of drinking and driving. U.S. Department of Transportation statistics show the number of drunk driving deaths were cut in half since MAD was founded, going from a high of more than 20,000 fatalities in 1982 down to about 10,000 in 2010. But in 2012, the number of drunk driving deaths rose for the first time in six years by 5%. For MAD and its supporters, that just means they are going to work even harder especially Unfried, who was honored by the Tampa Bay Lightning as a community hero in 2013. It was just amazing. <laughs> it was a great honor. The Lightning gave Unfried a $50,000 grant to help further her mission with MAD. She plans to develop an underage prevention program to take her message into the middle schools for the first time in Hillsborough County. If we don't change things, if we don't get things under control at a younger age and change the attitudes, about drinking and driving will never be safe. Hillsborough County State Attorney Mark Ober goes to the vigil every year and requires his young prosecutors to go too. He wants them to see how so many lives are affected by drunk driving. We've seen tonight at this uh, anniversary of, of MAD what, what great devastation drinking and driving causes and it's conduct that we can't take back. And the people here have suffered tremendously when it simply didn't need to happen. The entire Hillsborough County Sheriff's DUI squad is also required to attend the MAD vigil. It's a personal mission for Deputy Larry Morrell. He, his wife, and two of his friends have been victims of drunk driving crashes. I call a drunk driver a domestic terrorist. He is driving a one to a two ton bomb. And believe me, that's gonna hit somebody. You're impaired and you're driving that vehicle, it's just like a guided missile. Every year at the vigil, one of the most powerful moments is the Walk of Memories. Everyone at the ceremony walks together through a circle of DUI squad vehicles with lights flashing in memory of all the loved ones lost. Each death leads to a circle of people who grieve for their tragic loss and who are permanently traumatized because of it. I light this candle from his son, William Angel who died on July 19, 2012. I like this candle for surviving two DUI crashes and for losing two great friends and two great police officers. I like this candle in memory of my grandson, PJ Combs, who was killed by a drunk driver. This is the hardest part. I like this candle. For my sister, Josie De Stefano Palomino, and for all the other deceased victims. For MAD, the candles represent the light that leads to a better future where no more loved ones are lost to the irresponsible actions of a drunk driver. <laughs>